make about endurance <clears throat> is that um, there are three types. Metabolic endurance, which is our fitness level. Motor endurance, which in swimming means I, I swam around Manhattan uh, in 2002 and 2006. Took about 25,000 strokes. My goal was that stroke number 5,000 would be essentially the same stroke I took at the beginning. Stroke number 10,000, 15,000, and so on, that I, my nervous system would be so well imprinted that my stroke would never change as time went on and, and fatigue accumulated. And that's motor endurance. And then finally, mental endurance is your ability to stay on task. Every one of those 25,000 strokes, I had a stroke thought a very specific stroke thought I was executing in that stroke in that moment not thinking about what might happen in seven hours later in the Hudson River or just in that moment focused on taking that stroke as well as I could the ability to maintain that kind of focus for that long is, motor, is mental endurance you don't get the motor endurance without the mental endurance those last two were far more important to me in breaking a national record, swimming around Manhattan and so on. This, swimming is really, really different from land because of the requirements to do these things. All right? So how to work less. Uh, you heard Danny talking about cooperating with forces. Well, uh, it, the, the starting point in water is to recognize gravity is pretty inexorable and we want to cooperate with, not fight it. Um, Take the path of least resistance. I will be showing you what all that means, but that picture of my daughter Fiona, that's the path of least resistance. All right? Uh, instead of kicking on a kickboard and churning up the water, work on learning the skills that allow your legs to draft behind your torso. If you're going to swim 100 meters as fast as you can, then you need your legs to be really active. If you're going to swim 100 meters, butterfly, freestyle, whatever, you need your legs to be really active. If you're going to be underwater on a push-off, trying to go 15 meters out at lightning speed, you need your legs to be really active. If you're going to swim a longer distance, and especially in open water, you want your legs to be drafting behind your torso, not creating, not creating drag. Um, and the, the, the other part is water is thick. It's a thousand times denser than air, all right? And everything that goes through air fast, bullet trains, bullets, spears, arrows, and so on, have a particular shape. It's called a fuselage, all right? And the point of a fuselage, literally, all right, the point of the fuselage is meant to separate air molecules gradually so that the shaft can go through that. If you have something that's not as tapered going at, at the leading edge going through the air, you get crazy movement of molecules, all right? In water, it's even more important to separate water molecules gradually. So that picture of Fiona again, it's someone who's thinking about separating the water molecules in front of her, not pushing on those behind her. It's a real shift in awareness, all right? Uh, and then swim with your body using weight shifts as your source of propulsive power because you've got gravity, you've got body mass, all that energy is free, we want to take advantage of it, all right, rather than to focus on pulling and kicking. Pulling and kicking happens, all right, but your intentions as you pull and kick will change when, when these become your value system for swimming. All right, so what working less looks like uh, this is me in the world championships in the middle there with the, that uh, blue suit and blue cap. Everybody around me there is some probably 10 years or so younger than me because I'm passing people from earlier waves. If you were older, you went in a later wave. And, and you'll basically see that my stroke looks distinctly different from everybody else's stroke. All right, and that's my pool stroke. It's taken a lot of imprinting to be able to swim my pool stroke and not have it break down when the water gets rough like that. All right? To just have the stroke I have in a pool and not change it. All right? And that, that whole idea of motor, I'm sorry, mental endurance and motor endurance, you're seeing motor and mental endurance there. You're not seeing metabolic endurance. I'm just swimming through groups of people all right, really not working nearly as much as they are and, and looking very different. Now, this is a group of swimmers that we were teaching down in the Bahamas, and the characteristics that you see are very different from what you probably see if you've seen a lot of open water events, which is relaxed arms on recovery, clean entries, no splash, low head position, no water disturbance. They're practicing ease in a group. They're practicing staying together in a group 
And it's not exactly a loafing pace. You know, I, they're, they're probably swimming a, a mile pace of 30 minutes or so during the time that this is, this is shot. But basically, it's, it's about relaxation, all right? So, and, and you just really, really characteristically, the clean entries. All right, now, this, um, this was shot a little over a week ago. Uh, we were in Florida for a camp, uh, and I asked my video producer to shoot some video of me, and it just so happens there was a person in the next lane with different techniques. So I said, try to get us both in the frame at the same moment. And, and so what you can kind of see is there's a pulling and kicking intention in the next lane and an intention to spear the arm into the water and line up the body behind the arm is, is what I'm doing, all right? The legs are streamlined behind the upper torso. They spend a lot of time just drafting behind, not a lot of time working. All right, he's not kicking very hard, all right? He's not overworking his legs, but they're not helping very much, all right? And then as you look coming on, he's just a mass of bubbles. He's, his energy is going into making bubbles, all right? And I'm, I'm, I've spent a lot of time focused on not making bubbles, all right? And the relaxation of the hand as well, all right? So what, basically what I'd like you to get across is when I'm swimming, you see the position of my left hand there. I'm always thinking about driving my hand to a particular place in the water, all right? And everything about that place I've chosen to drive my hand to is consequential. So I don't think about finishing the stroke back here. I'm thinking about finishing the stroke there. I've selected the coordinates my hands are going to go to really thoughtfully in ways I will show you, all right? But what I'm thinking about is having my hand here, I've got a target in mind, and I want to drive it to there, and when it gets there, I want it to be relaxed. I don't want my hand to be stiff, all right? Because if it's stiff, it's not going to be, well, what you see here, let's, let's go to the next time I drive my hand down. All right, so right there on the right hand, you see that the palm is back, all right? If I was Michael Phelps, Ian Thorpe, Grant Hackett, or any of those people, at this moment, I wouldn't look like that. I'd look like this, okay? World-class freestylers can get their arms in the water and go like that. I've not coached anybody in 34 years that could do that, all right? Nobody's come to a workshop yet who could do what Grant Hackett. That's why they're world-class freestylers and the rest of us are normal humans, all right? There's a number of things that distinguish, but one of those things is can't do that, all right? Don't have the range of motion to do that, all right? But I can at least get the palm facing back, all right? If I can't get the whole forearm facing back, which offers a lot of traction, I can at least get the palm facing back. How do I get the palm facing back? Not by trying to make it face back, just by relaxing it. All right, so a big part of our energy savings is identifying muscles that are activated and don't need to be. If you can turn off some muscles that are activated and aren't helping you by being activated, you've just saved energy, all right? My head position is where it is, not because I put my head there, it's because I let it go there. I release it, I relax it, and so on, all right? So uh, the legs are streamlined, all right? So basically, I'm trying to make my body as much as I can like a dolphin for as much of each stroke cycle as possible, all right? So I'll just, I'll just do a little slow-mo direction here, and you can see how long my right hand stays in place. I'm being really patient about taking that stroke because I don't want to move my right hand until my left hip drives. Because if my right hand goes first, I've got to use arm muscles, and arm muscles get tired, all right? If I use the arm muscles to just hold my arm in a position that's giving me some traction, all right, and then drive the left hip down, I'm using gravity and body mass, and that doesn't cost me anything. All right, so here comes the left hand into the water. I've got both hands in front of me, which keeps wave drag lower. I've made, kept my body line longer for more of the stroke. And, and now is the power moment of the stroke, which is the left hip driving down and the right foot, the left hip and the right foot driving down at the same moment. Now watch the right hip and the left foot drive at the same moment. And together they drive my right hand to that spot. All right, so the propulsion is not from arms and legs working independently. 
which is what buoys and paddles and kickboards imp 